Well, hello, my name's Andy Tidy and welcome back to Canal Hunter. In this series, we've been following the line of the old Birmingham Canal as it made its way through from Birmingham to Wolverhampton and we've been looking for the lost arms and branches that used to exist. In my last episode, we got to Braidley and the, uh, the home of John Iron Mad Wilkinson. Well, for this episode, we've just dropped back down the hill 80 feet and back onto the Warsaw Canal. And I want to look at the Braidley Locks branch. But rather than starting the Braidley Locks branch from the top, I thought I'd come down here because this is where the canal actually started. And the Braidley Locks branch is a hybrid of two canal building enterprises. Where I'm standing right now is the very far end of the 1786 extension, which saw the Birmingham Canal extended down at Riders Green Locks and then along to the coal fields and the ironworks which surround this site. The actual canal terminus uh, led out just through the end of the factory to my right. This served the Monway Broadwaters and Moorcroft collieries. But it's immediately behind me that I want to focus on. Behind me is the Broadwaters Junction. And it's the junction where what is now the Warsaw Canal leads off into the Braidley Locks branch. And we're going to go up there and see what we can find. At the same time as this extension through to Broadwaters was approved, there was also an approval given for a private arm to be built um, through to my left. And that was granted to the Scott Foley's who owned the land. So let's go and have a look, see what we can find up the Brady Locks arm. Before we actually start the exploration of the Brady Locks branch, um, I think I need to put a little bit of context around this video. I can only shoot these videos when the leaves are off the trees, and that means I need to finish by the middle of March. Now, early March, um, it's been blowing a gale constantly, so I've picked my day and I took the best day that I possibly could. But as you'll see as the video progresses, when I move up the hill, the wind gets stronger and stronger. Now I've done my best to try and overcome this, but um, wind noise does feature a bit later on in this episode. So bear with me as we go through with this one. It's a good episode, but as I say, the weather really conspired against me. Immediately to the north of Moorcroft Junction, there is a series of deep depressions. This one usually contains a, something of a, a horrible sludgy looking lake, but it seems to have drained itself. But this was the site of the Moorcroft collieries, uh, which have since collapsed, causing the depression. This is a continuation of the Scott Foley arm. As you can see, it's still in water. Rather doubtful you could get a boat anywhere near this, but nonetheless, still a very recognizable canal. We've now arrived at the bottom uh, of the first lock flight created by Scott Foley's. As you can see there's one partial lock remaining immediately in front of me and another, another one just a little bit further beyond. These two lock chambers have been cosmetically restored to try and give a, an idea of what the lock flight used to look like. Uh, the chamber walls are all original but the locks themselves have been filled in but as far as I can see, they've just been filled in with rubble, so excavating them would be a pretty simple job. Here above the first lock, not only do you have the dry storm drain, which remains in place, you can also have great access to the sluiced sluices. And you can see that's where the water used to go through one side. This 
pair of locks and at the bottom of the radiant locks were renovated back in the 1980s, paid for with European money. I'm actually recording this about a week before the official start of Brexit, so that will be the last bit of European money we see as well. However, there are some serious plans afoot to get this canal restored. And as you can see, at least for this bottom section, it is literally a case of just getting a dredger out and digging it out. It's in water, it's almost canal depth. We're now standing underneath the Bilston Turnpike Road. And as you can see, the outline of the uh, canal arch is very clear. You can even see a slight arch in the brickwork above. Immediately, immediately behind me, you've got the uh, Bilston Road Bridge, which was the original turnpike for the area. Uh, the canal was built up to this point in 1800, and um, it then spread out into a number of basins. Immediately beyond the uh, Bilston Road, the third lock existed, pretty much under where you can see a manhole cover beyond the bikes. And then there was an arm which ran off in the northerly kind of direction in this ditch here. Part way up, the old Scott Foley arm uh, came to an end and it ended just about here where the canal has been narrowed down by the building of the houses opposite. There were arms off to the north and another one running off to the south behind those houses. We are now standing at the top of the Brady Locks branch and this is the section which was built by the in-house BCN work team and uh, it was the connecting section. There'd been iron smelting and coal mining in this area uh, since the 1700s. In fact, John Ironman Wilkinson had his extensive works just slightly to the north at Braidley. Now you may remember from series one when we looked at the Smedic summit that the, there had been an original plan to build a tunnel and had that tunnel project been successful, the canal would have run through this area at a much lower level. And the line of that lower canal would have been pretty much where you see that red house jutting out. In fact, standing here at the top of the Brady Locks branch, it's really clear where the lock chambers are. And you can see the land stepping down, just like an ordinary flight of locks. Had Brindley's canal been built 18 feet lower down, it would have continued on quite a different route and would have joined the uh, Wolverhampton 21 locks, well, another 18 feet lower, so another three locks further down. It would have quite radically altered the layout of the local canal system. The top of the uh, Brady Locks branch came up here and it joined into the newly constructed Rotten Brunt shortening and that was a canal built to cut off the neck of the Wensbury Oak Loop and the western bank of that canal still exists and you can see it curling around in front of me. The canal bed would be pretty much where the path was but uh, the southern bank, south the eastern bank, uh, would have uh, been removed and used to fill up the area across to my right which is all now housing. All these collieries took on water so they had to have uh, pit engines to, uh, to drain them, but they drained them by the area, not by the mine. Uh, the nearest one to here was the Braidley Works pump, and uh, that one still operates, and from 600 feet underground, water is pumped up to the surface, down the Braidley arm, and it represents the major feed for today's BCN. We've just come to the end of the Rotten Brunt shortening, and we're just turning off to the west, and calling the path, around Wensbury Oak Loop to see what we can find up there.
out here on the periphery of Weddell Wind, the line of the canal is actually amazingly obvious. You see one bank here, canal bed dipping down, then up the far side. We're now at the very far end of the Wensbury Outloop at Whittle Wind and we're on Batman's Lane and there's a bridge right in front of me that spanned an arm of the canal and the arm of the canal followed across behind the building over there and these arms were built to reach the Wensbury Oak and Wensfield collieries. I'd love to bring you some pretty shots of canals along here. Sadly, it's all very overgrown and weeded up, which is rather typical for the Weddell Wind area. But the line of the canal running along the back of these houses is as clear as anything. The Wensbury Oak travelled across this picture from left to right. There was a bridge running over the cross of the canal between here and Dan. And then there was the arm leading out to the Rotten Brunt shortening coming through immediately in front of me and another bridge connecting into this path here. Today there is absolutely nothing on the ground whatsoever to suggest that these bridges ever existed. So we've now completed the Wensbury Oak Loop. We've been, in all these years, I've never actually been all the way around that so that's a first. Uh, there are no built remains whatsoever, but the line of the channel is still very clear. From here, we're going to continue our journey on, and we're going to go back to our starting point, but we're going to go back via the Gospel Oak branch. The terminus of the Gospel Oak branch was exactly where I'm standing, but on one very old map, it shows another branch running out into the gap between the two houses up there. This branch was known as the Dumeresque branch. It ran for maybe half a mile with a couple of different sidearms. There are no traces on the ground whatsoever, but we do know that it started off by going up through two locks. And at the top there was a mine pumping engine, so that was pumping the water up, which would have given a water supply. And there were the Gospel Oak collieries and the Moat Farm collieries beyond. Uh, I've seen no traces of that whatsoever, but we do know that this was the starting point for the very obscure Dumeresque branch. I'm now standing at the very end of the three furlong Gospel Oak branch canal. This was a branch canal which was approved by government in 1783 and built in 1800. This canal remained in use for about 150 years but was finally abandoned in 1954. Since then it's been filled in but it's been quite lovingly preserved uh, as a, a linear park and if a canal has to end its days not in water, this is probably a pretty good way to go. The park is well cared for, it's got gym equipment on it, it's got a good well surfaced path and it's in sharp contrast to the uh, area around Weddell Wind where the Wensbury Oak Loop goes which is covered in rubbish and filth. So thumbs up for the Gospel Oak branch. Now curiously enough the terminal basin just behind me is barely three, maybe four hundred yards from the, one of the branches of the old Scott Foley branch. And there were plans when they wanted to build another through route to use this, the Gospel Oak branch, as the main through route and then build the locks up the end and onto the Wolverhampton level. So from here we're going to ride our way down the Gospel Oak branch. It's pretty devoid of any built structures whatsoever, uh, but we'll ride it through. It'll be one of my classic GoPro moments. And you might have noticed that new for this episode, I've actually got a GoPro. Up till now I've been making do with my trusty iPhone and I've been holding it in front of me and it doesn't really do the job. So I've invested in a bit of kit and here's the new one. Pretty good. GoPro 5, image stabilization, hours and hours of video uh, and a decent battery life. So um, hopefully you'll see the standard of pictures improve. So. Let's take the GoPro and go on down to the Warsaw Canal.
you can see all the trees are coming out with the uh, the buds and the leaves that really means that the uh, canal hunting season is drawing to a close because as soon as those leaves come out these canals pretty much disappear from sight so we've just got time to finish this series of canal hunter and this is Dan my assistant in this enterprise today so he's been doing all the shots from distance for you um, so thank you Dan and here we come to Wiggins Mill Pool and the junction with the Gospel Oak Branch and the Warsaw Canal immediately opposite the entrance to the Gospel Oak Branch there is the Leebrook Interchange Basin uh, and that's the entrance there were twin entrances there's the one you can see and there is the other section where the uh, bit of new brick wall has been added and that was the second. We're now at the far end of the Leebrook interchange basin. This was where the canal boats were brought in, loaded up with goods coming in from the GWR sidings. Uh, it's one of two basins. There was another one immediately over to my left. That's all been filled in. But this old basin remains remarkably intact. It clearly runs on a little bit further than the uh, current end. So it's been filled in with down by the sides you can see the old metal buffers at the edge of the canal and the remains of the uh, the walkways which were used to offload and unload things to the boats. This canal towpath has been massively improved since I was last down here. Uh, they've put down tarmac, I suspect they'll come down and put down shingle as well. There's a huge amount of money being spent on the canal towpaths to improve the access for these abandoned canals and frankly if uh, you're not going to have loads of boats down here it's really nice to see them being used by fishermen, walkers, cyclists. Now this corner uh, does have some significance with lost canals. Although there's no trace of it, coming off this slightly widened section, the Monway branch disappeared off into there. I did once say uh, in, a, in, a, in a Waterways World article that uh, the Monway branch was utterly and utterly lost uh, until one of their cartographers did a scout around and discovered um, Monway Street or Monway Avenue out beyond the railways. So there you go, I'm not infallible. He found a little trace of the, uh, the Monway arm, even if it wasn't canal, it was nonetheless a reference to Monway. So this is the end of this episode of Canal Hunter. I'm halfway between the end of the Gospel Oak branch and the Braidley branch, and this area between the two was redeveloped in the 1980s. It's been well and truly trashed by the local vandals since then, and you'll very rarely find a boat moored up here. In fact, there aren't even any mooring rings. But a couple of times a year, the Birmingham Canal Navigation Society run their explorer cruises. And when they do, 25 or 30 boats will come in here, two or three abreast, and they will follow exactly the same route as we do on foot, and they will walk up to the CRT Lockgate factory at Braidley, around to the Gospel Oak pub, and then back down to their boat. Whatever you fancy coming to explore the northern reaches of the BCN, but you're rather nervous, get in touch with the Birmingham Canal Navigation Society, find out when one of their explorer cruises is running. One of the uh, experienced guides will come out with you, they'll show you where to go 
and there's always safety in numbers. So you can be quite sure you're going to come out of this area unscathed. The uh, Brady Locks branch has an active interest group wanting to restore it. It's mainly led by the Nature, the nature Conservancy people. They'd like to open it up and turn it into uh, a linear nature reserve, uh, bring back some more wildlife. Obviously, the boaters are keen as well, so the IWA and the CRT and everyone is in discussions about that. Uh, it would be one of the more straightforward restorations, but wouldn't necessarily attract massive numbers of boats. So, that's the end of this episode of Canal Hunter. Hope you've enjoyed it. Next time, we're going to complete this Series 2 by looking at the Lost Canal Basins of Wolverhampton. So, goodbye from the Brady Locks branch, and happy hunting.